Hey everyone, welcome back to the Space Rock series. In this video, we'll be exploring cameras and viewports and changing our existing projects so we have a much larger room and a camera that actually follows the player. So to remind you, in our current project, we're not actually using any cameras or viewports at the moment. We have a pretty small room of 500 by 500 pixels. And as a result, when we run the game, that's how big the game window is as well. 500 by 500 pixels, so quite small. Now, you can think of cameras in Game Maker exactly as how you would think of them in the real world. So they're just a device to capture an image with. And you can think of a viewport like a separate display that you can show that footage from the camera on like a TV or a monitor. So a camera and a viewport can be totally different sizes. Your camera itself might have quite a small display, but we can scale that up on a large TV. In the same way, the camera in our game controls the dimensions of the game world that we're capturing. So it's the window into our game. While the viewport controls the actual size of the game display. And to actually get started using cameras and viewports, let's head over to our room start. And over in the room settings, right near where we set the width and height of the room, there's a little drop down menu called viewports and cameras. So let's just click on that, open it up and have a look. So to start using viewports, we just tick enable viewports. And now if we run the game, we're actually just gonna get a black screen. Nothing is going to display even though all of our objects and setup from before are still there, they are still drawing, nothing is being displayed because we didn't tell GameMaker which viewport to display. So we do that here and we can just tick visible and that's gonna make this camera and this viewport visible and be actually be used by GameMaker. And you can see a white square will have come up over the room and you can see it's actually quite a bit bigger than the room and that's because the camera, which is this white square, is larger than our room of 500 by 500. So if we run the game now, we can see that the viewport and the camera has actually changed. So the window itself is a bit larger, 1024 by 768. Now at the moment, the camera and the viewport are the same, but if we change the camera to the same size of the actual room, Let's have a look what happens. So there we go. So the camera is the right size. It's getting everything in the room that we want it to, but it looks like it's been distorted. And you might have run across this maybe with your own television and when you get the wrong aspect ratio. And that's kind of what's happening here. We're stretching the camera, the footage of the camera, to fit a viewport that it doesn't scale nicely with. And that's because the width of the viewport, the display, is a lot larger than the height, whereas the camera, it's even. So to get this actually looking nicely, we want it to scale up with the camera. So it's gonna to have to be a multiple of 500 by 500. So let's just make it a thousand by a thousand. And when we run that again, we can see that the window scales up perfectly. And we can see that the camera is being scaled up twice and it is a perfect kind of ratio. Now, if we actually hit enter, nothing has actually changed about our game. And one thing to note is that while you can have different camera settings, different sizes of the camera in different rooms, the viewport itself, if you do it this way, can only be set at once at the start. So the first room that runs, its viewport is going to determine the size of the game. So if we come over to game, and I'm going to also tick enable viewports and visible, and I'm going to make the camera, let's just do 200 by 200, so a little bit smaller. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you put for the viewport. And before I run it, I'm actually going to just introduce a new sprite. I'm gonna import it, and this should be available to you as well in the downloads, but if not, you can just make a really quick image. So, because we're gonna tile this so that we can actually see the ship moving in the game world. Because if it's just a black screen, it doesn't really give us a reference point. So, Instead of having that black background, I'm going to select our sprite right here. So we wanna tile the background horizontally and vertically, which should make it fill the screen. All right, great. Now, if I run the game, so our start menu looks normal. And now it looks like we've just got the top left quadrant of the room. 
So the camera in this room is quite a bit smaller. It's not actually following the player or anything at the moment because we haven't told it to. So let's do that. Return down here to camera settings. And down here, we can actually set an object for it to follow. And if we click on ship, it should start to follow the player around the room. So let's run that again. And if we actually move, it should follow the player. Now, you'll probably notice that it only actually moves when we get to the edges of the camera. And that's because it works with a little bit of padding. We can set a horizontal and vertical kind of border around the camera. And when the player moves outside of that border, then the camera will move. So if we want it to follow the player exactly, then we want to set the borders to exactly half of the width and height. So for me, because they're both 200, that's going to be 100 for both of them. And we can hit play. And great, so now it's following the player. You can see it doesn't look great though, it's kind of a little bit shaky. And our display is also completely messed up. But we'll fix that later. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the room a lot larger. So I might actually do 2000 by 2000. Feel free to make that whatever you want. And I might just move the player into the center of the room about. There we go. All right. So now one problem that we already saw was that the overlay of the scores and lives is actually drawing at zero zero in the room. So that's one thing we have to fix. And another thing is the asteroids. So we set them to spawn at the edges of the room. But since our room is so large now, it's probably going to take them quite a while to get to us. So what we might want to do instead is get them to spawn around the camera. And another problem, as you can see, is the camera was a little bit shaky. So even if I make the camera a little bit bigger, so 500 by 500, so it's kind of the original uh, ratio that we initially had. And don't forget, we also have to change the border now to get it to actually follow the player exactly. You can see it's still a little bit shaky. So this method of using the built-in object following, it works in a pinch, but it is a little bit fiddly. So in the coming tutorials, I'll be showing you how to set a lot of this up programmatically in a way that's going to make our lives a bit easier later on in the series when we add, say, some screen shake. So I will see you in the next tutorial where we will set up the camera in code. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.